Welcome. Today we're going to be discussing the technique circles of protection, its execution, some things you should know about its execution, some problems that may arise and how to fix them, and a little bit of its history. So let's talk through a little bit of its history. So like many of the techniques in the upper part of the system, this was originally presented in four and it was extracted. Unlike some of those techniques, this technique really didn't have anything added to it, just a few adjustments as it was extracted. So let's talk through the ideal attack. The ideal attack from an upper left front flank, okay? Not from a low, not from a lower, okay? Like calming the storm, though, it is coming on a roundhouse, and unlike calming the storm, which comes at a level, we are gonna employ the same concept. What is that concept? That concept is going to a zone of sanctuary and then preventing that opponent from bringing their elbow in front of their shoulder into their power zone. So we want to keep it as far as we can back behind the shoulder, that elbow. Okay, same thing here. We want to try and prevent it now at that shoulder again. Don't let that elbow come into its power zone because then you're going to be in a fight here and even though you have a really good brace, you don't want to get it into a fight with a bigger person. So what you want to do is try and keep that elbow back at that shoulder level. So they use the same general concept now coming down from the upper left flank. Okay? So what we're going to be doing is stepping up with our left foot, getting that block, and then getting a cover here. The reason why we have that cover here is so that we want to check this left hand, but we're also setting up for what we want to be doing with our next strike. So we come in here and do this block, and we immediately want to strike this opponent into the face. If we need to, and we see that left hand coming, we could always expand that circle, either go to the shoulder or the hand itself, and then divert from the face. Because remember, in order to turn a defense into an offense, we expand the circle, and in order to offense into defense, we contract the circle. So in this case, it's the opposite. What we would be doing is contracting that circle to turn it into an offense and expanding that circle into a defense. Okay? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be clawing the face. The reason why we want to claw the face is because we want to get control of this arm. So we're going to flip this around so you can see it a little better. What you do not want to do is start an orbit that's going to reorbit back to hit you. So what we want to do is we want to get to this opponent's center, center line. So if you look at it, you can see that the center line is not facing me, the defender. So how do I get that center line exposed? So the way I do that is I take my left hand from this claw and I force them to face me and slam that arm right into their side. So let's do that one more time. Come in here, one, two. Now, if you'll notice, their center line is exposed. Now, notice I haven't really done anything with their right hand. So what we need to do is pick up stuff with that right hand. So what we do is we have one circle going this direction, and what we're going to do is now pick up the other circle going in this direction. Okay, so we have... One way to think about it is that there are 90 degree angle. This would be a wall and this would be a wall and you're in that corner. We slam the arm. We then start this circle that's going to hit him in the groin. Now, the problem that may arise here, arise here is that I do this and I get a headbutt. So what we do, like we do in many of the other techniques, is as this hand slams into the groin, we expose the crown of our head because that's the strongest part. And then we have target to weapon rather than weapon to target. Okay. So we get to the heel palm, and then rather than just coming out, what we're going to do is we're going to slam that arm, let it continue past into your other hand, and then we can use elastic recoil in order to hit this person. But if you notice what's happening with my right hand, nothing really. All I'm doing is hitting and letting it bounce off. I can enhance the effectiveness of that by grabbing and then using the elastic recoil to go into the face, and then as I pull at the same time. So I can either hit and hit, hit and pull, or hit and pull at the same time. So we could do a variety of different things. In this case, what we want to do is we're going to go hit, let that right hand push the left hand forward into the back knuckle, do the grab, pull, and hit at the same time. Okay? So let's go through this one more time. Let's switch it around. A little bit less detail and walk through one more time. So we come through at that upper left quadrant. Flank, stop it before it gets to its power zone, get the check here so that we can check things off, or go into the offense, turn them directly with the arm down, parallel to me, perpendicular to the camera, and then have another circle coming parallel to the camera and perpendicular to me, so they're at 90 degree angles. Let this come here, 
hit, duck the head, grab, push, pull, using elastic recoil to deliver that outward back knuckle, cross out and cover. Okay, one more time, slightly faster so that you can see it. Up. Hope this video helps you. Thank you very much.